Good evening and welcome to Hot Topics from the Soul. I'm your co-host, Dr. Valerie Parker Hagen, and I have my co-host. Good evening, Dr. J.R. Fickland and this wonderful Tuesday that we're in, right in the midst of Women's International Women History Month. Yes, it is so amazing to be standing here um, on this platform because women that went before me, I saw them do it. I saw my sheroes before me and, you know, want to celebrate those individuals that paved the way for us to be who we are, where, you know, we have corporate jobs, where we held a high level, we're uh, entertainers, we're athletes. We're millionaires, all because there yes, were yes. women that went before us and paved the way. And not to forget that we are free to do and exist in this skin that we live in. Absolutely. And the reality is, is that without a woman, there is no legal entry into this earth realm. It has to come through a woman. And I tell you, women have shaped my life, have shaped my world have shaped my ideology, and I wouldn't be who I am without them. And, I, and I'll say to you, as a father, uh, and I have my princess. I have one biological daughter, but I have a couple of bonus daughters. And the only thing I do is hope that I'm making that impact in their lives because they're making an impact in my lives because the fact they have stood on the shoulder of women who have made a difference, who has been persistent, who has been resilient, and who have not been afraid to be visionaries. And so as this month has gone on, it has caused me to reflect on those women, those great women who have had influence in my life. And Dr. Val, I always tell you that you're one. You're one of those women that have impacted my life because of the fact I watched your resiliency. I watched the fact that you looked in the face of adversity and you slapped adversity and said, not here, you won't. I watched you be able to overcome things and you turn pain into purpose, purpose into power, and you never stop there. You created platforms for others. You open doors for others, and you pave the way. And when I look at women, and I look at the contributions of women in our society, I can truly say that, listen, I would not be who I am without the women who have been in my life and the women that have shaped this country. And uh, so it's kudos, it's, it's, uh, it's happy celebration. It is all of those things because women do make the world go round. Yes, we do. And, you know, like I said, we have women that have inspired us. We have our mothers, our grandmothers, yes. our aunties. And I, I am so blessed to have the circle of women to empower me, my sisters and, you know, my biological sisters, my sisters in the spirit. And yes, they yeah. make me who I am. They keep me going. You talk about that resiliency is because I have a network of people that love me, push me and believe in me and I'm paying it forward. It is my duty to do so. So this is why I do what I do. And I want to also acknowledge you. You, I tell you, my big brother, we've been at it for over 35 yeah. years. You yes. always remain the same. We talk yes. about everything, yeah. good, bad, and ugly. Oh, yes. And Absolutely. We check one another on our yeah. stuff. So, Absolutely. you know, that's, that, that is priceless. And I thank you for being here. I thank you for having the heart and the passion to help women. You know, people don't know the, the, the level of work that you do as an advocate for domestic violence, you know, yes. for men and women, but your heart and your passion is to uplift those women who've been broken. And I thank you so much for having a genuine love, heart, felt compassion to do that and do it not even thinking about it. Not even yeah, thinking about yeah. it. You just, it is just your nature. I know, I don't know if it's because you were raised with a bunch of sisters, but oh, yeah. <laughs> I like your feminine side. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, and I, and I love that because I often say, and I didn't discover this until I was an adult male. I realized the impact of growing up with six sisters and my mother had on my life. Now, let me make it perfectly clear. I had brothers and I had my dad. But out of those six sisters, five of them were older than I am, and they influenced me a great deal. They they are responsible for that tender, that compassionate, that sensitive side, that that ability to be transparent, because that's what they taught me inside of that. So 
when I look at the plight of women, and when I see men who don't understand that, I'm quick to say to them, look, man, open your eyes. You've got to be more careful because, listen, women are a very intricate part of who we are. And let me be quite honest with you. Women are some of the most resilient creatures God ever created. Women are resilient, but not just through childbirth. And definitely I'm not minimizing childbirth, but I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> that resiliency spills out in other areas of their life. Tell a woman no and see what happens. <laughs> she doesn't take no for an answer. She continues to press forward. Tell her no again. If she doesn't take it for an answer, she will continue to push forward until she gets to where she needs to get because she's visionary. And those are the type of people that we've been celebrating all month long. And then tonight is no exception. Yes, I'm so excited about the guest we have tonight. So if you can introduce her, I can't wait to get her on. I'm so excited about her. Absolutely. Well, tonight we have a, a young lady that has been described by many as up and coming, but she has burst on the scene. Uh, uh, Kenya Kitty London, as she's to Madison, uh, she's a lot of things. She's an entertainer. She is a songwriter. She is a media personality, motivational speaker, creative director. She's a scriptwriter, makeup artist. She is a she's a producer of videos. And she is in the journalism cable industry that she spent over 18 years inside of it. And one of the things that have really propelled her to really popularity is that she's the host of a Facebook live show that is called People of Power. And this People of Power show that she does is interesting because she focuses on interviewing people that she consider movers and shakers, people that are CEOs and head of companies, those celebrities, athletes, and community leaders. And she's done this and she's conducted over 400 interviews with these individuals. I watched her interview people even such as, uh, uh, what's his name, Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby. And she's at one of his homes interviewing him and everything. And I said, you know, does he need to just check out for a little bit our house? But anyway, she's not only that, but she's also, she's been recognized for her work as a hero inside of inspiring others. Some even said she's the next Oprah Winfrey. But I tell you tonight, she's not the next Oprah. She is the first Kitty London. So we want to welcome none other than Kitty London. And I promise you, Kitty's here. There she goes. <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Listen, we're live. I'm so Anything that's, what, that's what happens with being nervous and excited about you. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, you know, it's all good. I feel in such great company. I'm sitting, well, I'm not in the middle anymore, but two doctors. I'm noticing, I'm like, I am with some educated people today. So I need to make sure that I am speaking in the queen's language today. <laughs> Any language that empowers and expires is yes. the queen's language. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's what it's all about. You know, when I look at your biography and see the, great accomplishments you've made. I know it was not without controversy and heartache and pain, but yet we still rise regardless of what we go through, we grow through it. So if you can share um, some of the things that motivated you to thrust into the greatness that you now possess. Well, one thing I learned is that we have that word called ordinary. And I always wanted to make sure that I put that extra on there, extraordinary, because we have to live up to the potential that God has given us. And I think when we don't do that, we fall short. You know, I love Les Brown, and I'm sure you two have heard of Les Brown. <laughs> I've been his booking agent for almost 28 years. Oh, well, <laughs> Dr. Valerie, you know. Okay. <laughs> I heard a speech that he said about how many people leave their dreams um, or their dreams die. And there's so many dreams or million dollar dreams that are at the graveyard. And I'm like, listen, when I leave here, I want to be empty. Right. I don't right. want to have yes. any regrets. So I said, God, just keep me on this earth long enough to deplete me from everything that I am destined to do. So I said to myself one time, I um, I listened to Oprah and I, I like to listen to these people that keep me motivated. And it, it said, God, use me. And I remember asking God that I'm like, God, please use me. Men have used me. Listen, people have used me. <laughs> now it's time for you to use me. So I can see this 
this greatness that you have. And I, I'm honestly, when when I said that, things just started uh, moving a little bit for me. So this is what keeps me motivated. I want to make sure that I leave my kids a legacy, not a liability, right? <laughs> and that I am an inspiration for people. Who were told, like you said earlier, Dr. Thickland, the word no. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I take, I take the apostrophe off of can't, um, off of, you know, apostrophe T off of can't, and I say I can, and I will. Absolutely. And you, you've done that very well. You, you talked about the fact I wanted to leave a legacy and not a liability. And one of the things that's been evident with you is that you see, you have grown into being able to see the opportunities, even inside of what may be painful, what may be uh, adversity, but you managed to take it and, and continue to produce something with it. And, and, I, and I particularly talk about the music video that uh, that you that, that you produced. It came out, uh, I guess it was last summer or during the whole height of the things that we we're dealing with in this country uh, with George Floyd and so many things there. And, and, and I think it was called now I can't breathe uh, inside of what inspired that. And what was so amazing about that inside of it was I know you and I saw it debut on MSNBC and I'm going, I know her inside of that. But they grabbed it. And they saw it. it. It really kind of blew up because it was the perfect song that actually that so many mothers and some fathers could relate to during that time there. And, and I want to just hear from you. What is it that inspired you? What is it that caused you to have to get that message out? Because that's the way it came across. It came across as, listen, I've got to stand up and I've got to speak out for my babies. I mean, that's the way it, 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 it came across. And I think that's what touched so many people. Yeah, it was basically that mama bear came out. You know, then we were, most of us were working from home, right? We were in the right. pandemic. I was kind of forced to look at the news. You know, I'm that type of person when I'm working, I might catch the news at 11 o'clock or, you know, I might look it on, but I'm not a news person because to me, the way the media is set up, to me, it, it's like, we'll give you all the depressing news and then maybe the last five minutes will be, you know, hey, now we're going to do our good news, right? So all that, but that was every day, all day, knees on the neck. Um, I mean, we started with Ahmaud Aubrey, then it went to George Floyd because it wasn't just George Floyd, but I think he was just, the icing on the cake because we actually saw him saw the lamp, yeah. Right. Can't he couldn't breathe. He was calling out for his mom. Knees on the neck. People were upset. And it, it caused a global wave of being upset. I mean, people from other parts of the world were feeling black people's pain at that point. And you know, mm -hmm. as a mother, and I just tell people all the time, you know, we always put like our children in the place of another mother even when like Trayvon Martin that was not my yeah. son but that was yeah. my son and yeah. it could have been my son and then when you think my son had you know he started driving and I'm like you know people have routine stops and they end up dead right mm -hmm. so I just started thinking about all of these things and I'm like I literally am scared for my sons you know as a mother to have to talk to your sons about how do you get arrested? You know, and not saying they're criminals. It could be, again, a routine traffic stop. It could be there with someone that should be with or whatever the case may be. But how do you talk to an officer so he won't kill you? We have to have these conversations. And scary. I just, it's scary. And I just got to the point where I was just so upset. And music has always been my therapy. I mean, I've had many songs before now I can't breathe. And that's why the song is called, because as a mother, people know. I mean, as a father, too, I don't want to discount fathers and their bonds with their kids. But you remember when your kids were sick at night? You mm -hmm. couldn't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things. So I felt like if my children can't breathe, now I can't breathe as a mother. I'm suffocating. And I wrote the song in about two days <laughs> and wow. it was, it was meant for someone else. And I just was sitting there writing, writing. My mom was like, that's a hit. And I'm actually, as I'm writing, I'm tearing up as I'm writing the song because I felt everything that I wrote. And wow. when I had my mom, my mom was in the video, my sons were in the video. And I think at first, they really didn't understand the magnitude of the song. Right. But when we were getting all of this press, I mean, I even got people from Jerusalem to reach out to wow. me. Wow. 
Yeah, it was. It, they have like a channel nine over in Jerusalem, but it was all about Black Lives Matter, Black Lives. And I was like, I'm not. Where can people, people find it? Where can it's on YouTube. It? It's What's on it YouTube. Called? It's they called search now, for it. now I Can't Breathe, Katie London. And it's on Amazon, iTunes. It's on wow. every, um, yeah. So every digital platform. But I really wrote it because I felt like I was screaming inside. I can't sing. I said everything God has given me. He didn't give me a voice. I can rap. So I said, let me. I just gotta express the way I felt. And I have my girlfriends come to the video um, as mothers. That's what their parts. And they're all lawyers. And most of these are professional women. And they got on their knees, pumped their fists up for the cause. And yeah, so music is a love for me. It's always been a passion for me. Dr. Valla, I, I, I can see your agreement because you have two sons and I know how much they mean to you. And inside of that, and of course I have four sons and I know how much they mean to me. And inside of that, to have that conversation, and I have a son who's six foot nine. My oldest child is six nine, size eighteen shoe. He's always been a big kid, and he's not a skinny six nine. He's a big six nine, and even to this day, I'm always and he's in the whole uh, profession of corrections and law enforcement, and I'm still always mindful of what happens when you know if he gets pulled over and he doesn't get a chance to flash a badge or whatever. What can happen because immediately if they ever get close enough, and he unfolds. He's a big guy. So why waste time, you know, with trying to wrestle if you feel like you have to wrestle? So all those things are important to me. And when you talked about even in from Jerusalem, you know, people are talking about it. But I think your mom was on to something. She's prophetic when she said that's a hit. And I think it's because of the fact she could feel the connection. She felt that connection to it. And quite frankly, Kitty, I think that's what made that's what caught the attention of everyone. They felt the connection. They felt that it was, although it was a video, this was as live and real as could be. And, and in that time and in that moment there, listen, all of us was like it used to be back in the day. You know, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? We all want to check on our sons. We all want to check on our kids because we understood the climate and the atmosphere that was going on at that time. And the first yeah. line was was just basically what it was. It, you know, it's, it's like as a black mother, what do you tell your sons? They can kill you with their knees. They don't need guns. All wow. they see is your black skin as a threat. They don't care how many degrees you're about to get. So they don't wow. know. Wow. They don't know everything that you've done. All they see is you as a threat. And by the time they hear about the great things you've accomplished, it's in your obituary because you're yes. dead. Wow. wow. And just the lyrics. See, that's you what I'm nailed saying. It. You the nailed lyrics, it. You nailed it. And I, I'm looking at you, Dr. Val, because I look at the fact with, with, with your sons and, and even them pressing their way through all adversity and thing, getting their education, getting their degrees. And, and yet it's just your own son finds himself caught up in a situation that should have never happened. And yet it's still they didn't look at them as being college kids. They did not look at them as being educated college young men. They only saw the one thing as you described. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 really a painful thing to even imagine in watching the clips from George Floyd. It was just like it just was I, I couldn't breathe because right. like you said, Dr. J, my son Daniel went through a situation like that and it could have been another way. Unfortunately, his friend Dan Roy Henry, known better known as DJ, lost his life at the hands of police officers. So I mean even though it wasn't me, wasn't my son, it still hurts to talk about it. It still hurts when I think about it because it could have been my son. He walked away with some injuries, but it wasn't unto death. So I think that as black mothers, we worry more. I tell my kids, and now that my sons have sons, I think they see clearer now through the glass lens what I've been trying to say being a black man here in the United States of the free you're really not free you're always on guard they're professionals they have college degrees and yet they still have to work harder they still have to do things a lot better than a white counterparts I was watching some clips on 2020 yesterday 
Is it with Sunday? Yeah. My days run together where they were talking about in the military, how um, blacks in the military, regardless of how high they've climbed the ranks, they are still considered less than, even though they have more degrees than their counterpart, they're still considered less than. So if the struggle is real, it's real, but we still keep rising, we still keep walking, and we still keep marching, but we march pre uh, peacefully and we march with a purpose. And it's so ironic that you mentioned 2020, because that was one of the, another uh, lyric that stood out to a lot of the journalists when I said, they said 2020 was gonna be a movie. Who knew we would be the stars in this horror movie? COVID-19 taking all our breath, then we turn around, can't breathe knees to our neck. Because when we think about COVID-19, we were the main <laughs> race that COVID-19 was taking down, was African-Americans. Yes. And I just started looking, I'm like, we can't get a break. It's either we're dying from COVID or we're dying from police brutality. So I can't breathe really was symbolic. <laughs> Because we really could not breathe, whether it was, like I said, through the knees on our neck or we lost our breath to COVID. So it was a lot going on last year. And I, like I said, that was the only way that I could really express the way I felt and what was going on with me. I think 2020 has exposed a lot uh, as it relates to African-Americans or minorities. It has exposed a lot and it has put on the magnifying glass so that we can see just who people are. People you wouldn't even think were, you know, racist, had racist tendencies, you know, whereas um, you found yourself, yeah, you being like uncomfortable and they're uncomfortable now. And it's, it's because they had underlined discrimination problems that they didn't deem as discriminatory, but they are. Yeah. If you notice that 2020 showed a lot of cor corporate America companies, big companies that the money um, that black people were behind, we had a lot of power. Because honestly, if it was not for all of those marches and George Floyd, there would not be the diversity and inclusion that you hear about now in a lot of these Fortune 500 companies. They realize that black people really have a lot of say so and we really are powerful when we get together and it wasn't just black people doing it it was more than that but it Absolutely. was different because you know we've been around right we've seen we george floyd unfortunately he was not the first i don't think he will be the last but there was something about him that made the nation just pause for a second yeah say, he became the sacrifice for us to stop and see it it, it, it kind of hushed the world for a moment to say, okay, we've been screaming, we've been talking, this is what it looks like. And unfortunately he was the sacrifice. Yeah, it was a, it was a perfect intersection of, of two storms, what we had. COVID had slowed things down enough that most of us was confined to our houses. And as you said earlier, television was, was the pastime. And for us to literally see a man, a person, Die in before our very eyes, and it wasn't Hollywood. It wasn't, you know, okay, all right, take two, scene three. No, it was really what was happening, and we saw that. And I think the humanity inside of America did wake up for a moment. The humanity inside of us that recognized what reason would you do this? What reason could justify this type of thing? And what happened inside of it, I believe that the humanity inside of people awakened and they recognize enough is really enough. It is enough. But my concern was, as it continues to be, that, yes, we need police reform. We need prison reform. We need all these reform. But let's not forget for one moment, those are the low hanging fruit. That's low hanging fruit. Reality is, is that we had to look at the reform of a lot of our other legislation. We had to look at the reform of a lot of things as far as uh, what we see inside of structural racism. And those things, those conversations there, all of a sudden we saw them shared by people of white, black, you know, across, and it spoke to humanity. Now, the interesting thing, it made a lot of people uncomfortable because of the fact, it, it's almost like, do you see me now? <laughs> 
Do you see me? And we saw, and our eyes was open for, for a period of time. And with that has birthed a lot of powerful voices. With that, you know, adversity always will birth something in us. We saw adversity, it birthed something inside of us. And we saw Black Lives Movement uh, really take on a new breath because the Black Lives Matter movement had been around, but it took on a new breath, a new theme. It took on, uh, uh, if you would, a real concrete purpose. And as a result of it, we've seen it. And I, I need to say that even inside the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, there's definitely uh, sisters that was also leading at the head of that organization. So we see that happening. We've seen that happening when we, as we stay on this thing of, of black, uh, of history of women. We look at what even vote black votes matters with my with my dear friend there who grew up in my hometown. Uh, we've seen so many things happening, and the result of it. Think about 2020, folks. What a year it was, and it concluded with an election that turned out the greatest number. The irony of it. The largest voters turnout in the history of this country happened in the midst of the worst pandemic that we've ever seen. That speaks volumes to what adversity birthed, resiliency birthed. People like Stacey Abrams, who 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 herself had been robbed, even from her gubernatorial uh, uh, seeking of office, had been robbed. But like women do, like women do, and specifically black she women still do. Still rose they as a phoenix. Sit back and roll in their pity. Not at all. Listen, she had a strategy and a plan. She recognized the fact that there was a voice that was worth being heard, and it was our voices. And she stirred up some things. And that's the result of it, folks. We saw some things happen that had never happened. We saw states like Georgia turn out, it just blew our mind. We saw something happen, and it's that type of spirit that I often think that women bring. I think women, women by nature, they birth, they birth, and, and they birth not just babies. They birth movements. <laughs> they they birth not just movements. They birth destinies, and that is what we see, and that is what we will continue to see if we're willing to continue to press forward and be willing to to stand against the to stand against the storm. And be able to say, I will not allow you to put me in that box. And we talked about that earlier, about that box. And, and, and for you, Kitty, what has it meant to you to make sure that you're not in the box? Well, I, I, I guess me, I'm the only, I'm an only child. Uh, some people know that, some people don't. I'm an only child. And, well, I do have a brother I found on Facebook, but that's a whole nother show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, being an only child, you develop a lot of tendencies of having multiple multiple personalities. You find yourself um, being many different people, but you're also one. And I noticed that I would master a lot of different things. And at one point, I'll, I'm like a season. So this season, you'll know me as a makeup artist, right? I'll get into right. makeup artistry. I'll conquer it. I'll get clients. I love it. But then next season, I'm going to be a songwriter and I'm going to go a hundred percent in that. And that's how I am. I kind of am like an onion. I'm like just blooming, right? Until you just get all of me. And I think that's important for us not to limit ourselves or allow other people to limit us and say, you can't do that because you're doing this. You can't do that because you're doing this. I'm like, well, who are you to limit me? I feel if God has given me the talent, there's a purpose. And when you hear people like Steve Harvey and, you know, a lot of the gurus, they'll tell you, you know, you need to have multiple sources of income. So I feel that anytime that God gives me a talent, that's a room for that's a gift and it's going to make room for me to grow. So that's why I don't stay in a box because I'm not meant to stay in a box. I'm not meant to be a cage bird. I have wings and I fly. So, you know, my next season, I don't know what it's going to be. But from what I know of me now, I am everything that I have on my bio. I am a makeup artist. I am a creative director. I am a motivational speaker. I am an entertainer. I am a host and creator of a show. I do have a production company. I am a visionary. And I'm not going to let anyone tell me that I can't do all of those things because I know that I can. So I tell anyone, never let someone tell you, you are a walking billboard. 
And you know how when you do things and people say, well, I didn't know you could do that. Or I didn't know you. The reason why a lot of times they don't know is because you don't show it. They won't know it if you don't show it. So I say, let them listen. Let everyone know all of your talents. Never limit yourself. And that's what I, I, I live by that. What I'd like to correct you because you said that you're like you're the only child and I can tell you there are women that are the only child and they are brats. It's about <laughs> me, myself, and I. And you're brat. nothing like that. Everything not that you said that you've done, it's always been to empower and uplift other people. It has not been about you. So you're not like everyone else. So that's why you're my Shiro today. <laughs> and and um, I know because I know, listen, I know we can talk and I want to make sure that I get this out. This is real important. Um, I started the People of Power show and power stands for me. It's an acronym. It's for pushing on when everything's rough. Wow. I started oh, doing rough. that is because the makeup artistry actually helped me with the People of Power. I started doing makeup on some extraordinary women. These women were you know, the best in their fields. They were doctors, lawyers, um, just, just phenomenal professional women. And, you know, when you start to be around people that are refreshing and education is just, you know, just their thing. You're like, oh my gosh, like, I really think you're dope. Like, why aren't you on TV? Like you are like Atlanta housewives. I would walk into their homes and I'm like, the, the ceilings were like this. I mean, you know, they had, some of them have Bentleys and I'm not going to call any names. But it was just amazing to see women who look like me yes. and their husbands who look like me, who were living extraordinary lives and they were legal. Right. And I'm like, younger kids need to see this yes. because, you know, when you're younger, only thing you think about is being an athlete. Right. To get you out of out of what they call the hood. Right. Or being a rapper. And I'm like, rappers actually are renting the homes that these people are living in because they went to school. Yeah. So I wanted to expose people like that, like in a great way. I wanted to, you know, go to their homes and I wanted to capture their their moments of their nice houses and their nice cars. But I wanted to know the story and I wanted people to be transparent because transparency is the blessing. I'm like, did you ever feel like giving up? Did you ever get a car that was repossessed? Did you ever get a foreclosure? Did you ever lose everything twice and bounce back? And for the most part, the answer was yes. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, way to success. I thought that was so mind blowing. And I would ask people, I'm like, listen, I'm not trying to get all your dirt, but I really want to know, did you ever have a time when you looked up and said, I don't know how I'm going to make it? Oh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Now, fast forward, you've gotten through it. But do you know how many people that would inspire? Because we, you know, when I'm when my account is negative, right, because I'm transparent, I've been there. The last thing I want to hear is about you on your jet, <laughs> eating sushi, right, with your Louis bag. Like, that's not that's not motivating me. But motivating me is seeing all that. But you telling me I was in the soup line. I was mm -hmm. homeless. Mm -hmm. Right. And I got up and I said, you know what? I'm going to keep on moving. I started praying. I started doing this, like going through the steps of life. That's what inspires me. So that's what the people of power represented. And I felt like to me, Palm Beach County was a place that only celebrated and were being transparent, the same people. And I would go to the award shows. I would see the magazines and I'm thinking, do we not know how many other great people are in Palm Beach County? There are a lot of great people in South Florida. So me, I love the underdog. I love yes. the underdog. I love the people that say, well, who is that? Why is it? And when they listen to their story, they're like, oh, oh my yes. gosh. Yes. And we all have stories. Now, some yes. are bestsellers. But when you look at it, right? But everyone has a story. And I love to, like I had um, Coco, I had Corey Goff. And granted, she was already, you know, good, right? right? But now she's like, whew. And I love to see that. I don't want to get you when you're like, I can't reach you anymore. Right. I right, want to, right? Right? get you when you're still in that, like you said, that up and coming. Yes. I want to get you then. I always tell you, listen, when you get there, don't forget me. But I love to I get said that, that to Tyler Perry. 
Because yeah. I got him when he was like sleeping in his car doing the plays. I could do bad oh. all by myself. I did a one on one interview with him. I said, OK, oh, you're going to be great. You're going to be phenomenal. So don't forget me. Can't get a brother to call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Harry. That's OK. Listen. But he's a, he has Tyler done Perry, a you phenomenal at this video? work. Like Tyler Perry, work. if you're looking at this video, Tyler Perry, can you give our sister a call, please? <laughs> and so, so right now, so right now I'm going through this. And please, if you are watching American Idol, please, I have made sure that I am Team Willie Spence. I have to say that. Um, yes. Willie was on my show. I had him two years ago. He actually did a snippet of singing the um, my theme song. But he has been just an amazing person to watch the growth. So I am saying that he is going to hit um, the top 10. I don't know where he's going to place, but in my spirit, I think he's going to hit top 10. But those awesome. are the people that I love to see. Because sometimes we just want to go with the people who arrive. Right. I don't, need you, right? Exactly. I don't need you when you arrive. I need you when you're on your journey, when you're riding, you know, riding by. Uh, still humble, right? But I think that we just have to do a better job with exposing great people. Yes. Absolutely. You don't have to be a celebrity. Yes to be great. Yes, I totally agree. And I want us to give a shout out to everyone that I've ever called that have answered my call. If they weren't there, they called me back. So that's what I call greatness when you've excelled and arrived and you can still look back and say, oh, hi, Val, how you doing? <laughs> that Absolutely. is very special and important to me. So I want everyone to, to know that regardless of how high you get, don't ever forget where you came from because you came from good stock, you came from hardship, you came from pain. And um, Katie, I want you to talk about being un unstoppable because there's many obstacles that you had to overcome along the way. And people think you just, oh, you're a makeup artist, oh, you a rapper, oh, you did this and you did that, that, well, you had all these things, but share with the audience the progression of who you are. So we're going to go back to some, uh, some, like I said, some of the childhood things. One of the things about being an only child is when you are an adult, you tend to like to bring people along with you because again, you know, you're, you're raised by yourself. And for the longest, when it came to projects or anything that I wanted to do, I always wanted to have someone with me. It would be like, let's do this together. Let's do the company together. Let's do, and I'm not sure why I'm not sure. I need to probably talk to a psychologist, find out why that was. And I'm thinking it was the only child. But where I'm going with this is most of the things that I did with other people never worked. And I what? would never understand that. And I would always say, well, is it me? Do I ask more people? Do I run them off? Like, what's going on? And I remember my work ethic. I didn't want to sleep. I want to make sure that I kept going. I, I didn't have time for excuses because I realized that the only people that benefit from my excuses are my competition, right? And when I noticed that I would pour into people more than they would pour into themselves, mm -hmm. I would want them to succeed more than they wanted to succeed. And I had to really just have a, a real talk and said, you know what, Kitty, you know, Kenya, or whatever I was that day, <laughs> if you pour into other people, what you pour, if you pour into yourself, what you pour into other people, how much further would you be? And I really had to sit and look and say, you know what? The same energy that I'm pouring into a lot of people that either are not ready for it, because I'm not going to say they're not deserving. I don't want to say that. I can just say maybe not ready for it at that time. And I'm ready. Do it. And that's what was my fuel to get me going. And, mm -hmm. you know, do I have people that I've reached out to who never return my call? Yes. Have I had people to say, mm, not right now, I'm not interested. This is what makes me who I am because I'm a type of person. And maybe this is where the bratty comes in, doctor. <laughs> you tell me, no, I'm going to show you. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you say I can't have a show. OK, I'm going to make my own platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Still I rise. <laughs> Still I rise. Right. You don't want to sign me a label. I write my own song and put it out myself. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's always that thing that is my even though I'm like, you know, a wounded animal, I go and lick my wounds and I'll, I'll, I'll hide for one and I'll come back and I'll emerge. I'm like, OK, 
you know, there's there's times or talks, and I'm in real quick. I don't know if on that bio I have because I have to update it that I now am an ambassador for a brand called Chic and Curvy. They're yeah. out of California. One of the testimonies to that is, you know, people are mean, people are cruel, and and sometimes they're saying they're being upfront, but sometimes people are just mean, right? And by you being in the public eye, you're always judged. You're always scrutinized. Mm-hmm. Hair, the clothes that you wear. And I remember one time people were like, you know what, you need to get better clothes, you know. You and for me, I was one of those people that I, I didn't think I needed to really dress up because it really wasn't about me. But I kind of had to do a self talk, and I'm like, you know what, maybe I need to look into some things. So I started googling and uh, plus size clothes. So I found this brand called Chic and Curvy Boutique. Make a long story short, I had been wearing their clothes for about a year, and Dr. Thicklin, you remember we said that you make an opportunity out of something. Yes. Both of us are walking billboards for other companies. Most of us are ambassadors for other brands. Absolutely. We just don't get paid. Yes. (laughs) And they don't know about us. How many people do you see that for Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and all these fashion? You spend all that money with these people, and they will never give you a free item. And maybe they will, but you never reach out to them to say, hey. Look at me. I got on your clothes. I wear your clothes all the time. Mm -hmm. So I took I took an opportunity and I said, hey, this is me. Hey, every time I every time I did, uh, you know, a photo shoot or whatever, I would send it to them. Make a long story short. Now I'm an ambassador for them. And I laugh because I said the person that ends up being picked at about fashion is now an ambassador. Wow. (laughs) And I'm thinking, you know, God will pick the most unlikely person. You stay humble and you just go and you go where you're supposed to go and you, in the walk that you're supposed to walk. And I'm telling you, and I, and I say this is tell people this. If you're getting picked at right now, it's all a part of the process. I'm telling you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's all a part of the process. And I think that's what that happens when you're just unstoppable. You don't take no for an answer. Yes, you get hurt. Yes, you get disappointed by people. But you have to keep going. And, you know, when they said me, myself and I, you have to be the captain of your own ship. You cannot allow people to tell you where you're going, because the minute you put someone else in control, guess what happens? You become the Titanic and you sink. So I am the captain of my own ship. And as long as God has put breath in me and I can talk and walk and think, I'm going to do it. I started school a year and a half ago and I'm old, right? I'm like, I don't want to go back to school, (laughs) but my company was paying for it. And I said, well, why not? What do I have to lose? Nothing but time. (laughs) And it was something that I wanted to do. And I got my, my mass communications and that journalism degree. And it was just so fitting because it was something that I wanted to do. And through the pandemic, through all of that last year, I ended up still graduating. Now you, let me tell you what the hurt is. I graduated with a 3.48. Honors is a 3.5. <laughs> I wanted to write my teachers and like, can I get extra credit somewhere? <laughs> but I let it go. And so I did graduate. I have my virtual graduation in June. My oldest son is graduating with his bachelor's in June. And then my youngest son is graduating with his high school diploma in June. So we have all the class of 2021. So wow. when they say that, and I, I promise you, and I said it here, watch us. We're going to go national news about that. We have th- almost, well, two generations of graduates, but I needed to be an example for my sons. Wow. Um, that it's never too late to go back. Wow. You know, people can tell you what you don't need and what you can't do, but you be an example. And yeah. you show them that I can and I will. That is powerful. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I heard something in, in what you said that I think so many people are going to gravitate to and hold on to. It's the fact that you did not allow, even when people had other intentions, whether being mean, people throw shade. Sometimes they throw the whole palm tree, you oh, know, yeah. oh, and, yeah. and they do it intentionally. But it's amazing to me how you took that very opportunity, all that shade, you made a fan out of it. I mean, you, you went. And uh, I've seen you in your cheek and curvy. I've seen you. <laughs> and so, and I'm like, that, wow. I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I mean, it's like you are the signature for it when you wear it. 
And so what I know that people are going to take from this today is the fact that they will not be they will not be so quickly uh, to if you would fall apart because someone uh, doesn't like them or someone is mean or someone you know wants to make fun out of it. Because at the end of the day now, the real the person who's getting the last laugh is really you. I mean, you are I mean, you're an ambassador for the company. You, you definitely. And I don't know who's got something going on there, but the colors that you pick. And I mean, I'm like going, what is this? Because it is perfectly you, you combine that with you being the makeup artist that you are and all that. It's like, listen, I'm quite sure that they're happy that you're uh, that you're the ambassador. And for all the haters out there and the ones who oftentimes uh, do mean things because they can. Mm. I believe that they find out later on. It, it's nothing like, you know, success is the best revenge. And, and I just love the fact that that you, you get the best revenge. And sometimes, you know, you just have to like joke on yourself. You know, I knew again, you know, and I I had to be honest and I was never a fashion person only because I always really was a tomboy. Like I really didn't get into fashion until my late thirties. Like I really wasn't that person. I could walk around in scrubs because again, I was putting people before me. So I was like doing a lot of behind the scenes. I really wasn't in front of the camera. And again, even when I do my show, you know, a lot, this is like the longest I talk really because <laughs> it's really about my guests, right? Yeah. I don't get on my show and talk about all my accolades and you know, whatever. Every now and then I might throw out something, right? But it's about them. And I've right. always been that person. And like you said, you know, for only children, I never mind someone else shining because you know like they said we got how many stars in the universe and they're all shining no star takes it away from any the other star they all have their way of shining and i believe i think if more people look at that and say you know what they can shine i can shine you know and i remember when i started doing makeup it was like everyone started doing makeup. I was like, well, when did they get interested in makeup, right? And I really felt some type of way. Let's we're talking about transparency. Yeah. That's just like three years ago when I started doing the show. It's like now everybody has a show. So I had to really sit and look and say, what is your why? When you think about what your why is, everyone else just fades away. It doesn't matter. Yes. I had to think about Oprah and back in the day, you know, they had Rolanda, they had Dr. Phil. Right. I mean, there were so many shows and guess what? Each of them had an audience. So I said to myself, stop being bratty. Stop, see, that's part of the only child. You're not the first, you're not the last, you're not the only, but what you do bring that no one else will bring is you. No one can duplicate who you are. So oh, yeah. you do and you stick to the why and everything else fades. And I'm doing it three years later because I would have given up had I thought about views, right? Yes. Because I'm pushing positivity. Positivity is the hardest sell. People yes. don't want to be uplifted. How yeah. dare us? We're not cursing on this show. We're not <laughs> fighting amongst each other. We're not blasting someone. You go, that's Amen. boring, right? <laughs> that's boring. Yes. If we were fighting, we would be viral. And that's and I had to rethink myself. I'm like, you know what? It's not you. It's not you. It's mm -hmm. them. So you stay true to your brand, right? The views will come. The money will come. The people who you are supposed to attract will come. And I used yes. to tell people, 10,000 people can watch a train wreck and it still be a train wreck. Wow. You can have 50 people watch you, but 10 of those are executives for film and TV. Two of these people could be people that can pivot you to the direction that you want to go to. Exactly. So stop looking at the how many and look at the who's watching, right? And that's my self-talk. And that's for anybody who's watching. And I, that's not saying that you want to do a show, but I just tell people, stay authentic to your brand. Don't sell Absolutely. out for the public or the popularity a lot of yes. popular people who are broke <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true yes it is there's people that you're watching and you want to be like that you think are wealthy in in finances and stuff and they are actually broke 
And also, you know, we, we, especially our young people, I'm always on the young people, letting them know, don't look at these screens. Don't get caught up with social media. What they people see. only show you what they want you to see, right? And I hate reality shows. I hate it. And and to be honest, like, you know, you you would see people flashing cars and money and houses. And you're yep. like, well, how are they doing this? The I tell people all the time, right? You can't compete with fraud. You don't want to <laughs> compete with fraud. And no, and it's and it's but it's real. You don't you never yeah. know how people get things. So I always tell people, let them do their journey. And not saying that every person as flashy as fraud. No, right. we, we know right. that. But we can't compete with things that we are not familiar with. We don't know how these people get what they get. And at the end of the night, I feel like this. If I can sleep well at night, I don't have beds knocking at my door. It may take me a little longer to get where I'm going. But when I get there, I can relax and feel good. And I tell my young people, listen, you don't want to get caught up in fast money. It looks good right now. But I'm telling you, if you visit any penitentiary, they'll have the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And yes. like, it's not worth the time. So that's my thing. Right. It's like, don't get caught up with all that. It's People in federal prison are actually very smart people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are very intelligent, smart people that have, you know, <laughs> taken people's money, you know, figured out a way to get their money and manipulate them to get their money. So those are the ones that are in federal prison. They're there because they were smart and they're not in there for like, 2,000, 3,000. They're in there because million. they sold millions. Three million. But I was, you know, I was thinking about that though. I would, I would never say all because that's, you never can say all, but I would majority, probably say yeah. the majority of the prisoners, if mm -hmm. they could say, if I could get out and never do what I did, most of them would say that. So I always mm -hmm. tell, like I said, my young people, please don't get caught up. That's why I love women who sometimes are so transparent, they'll like throw out their wigs and throw out the lashes and show us with no makeup because it's like, this is who we are when we wake up, right? <laughs> and and as glamorous as makeup is, yeah, but as, as glamorous as makeup is, it's also a facade, right? I mean, you know, and I tell women all the time, you can look just like that woman that you see on TV in the magazines. All you need is the right stylist Go to Chic and Curvy, quick plug. Um, the right hairstylist, the right makeup artist, and you too can look like these women that are on TV. You just need a glam squad. Uh, that's all you need. And that's the uplifting part about me. I tell people the truth. And I want people to make sure that they're not putting themselves, because depression is real, mental illness is real. We see these people on TV. A lot of people get depressed because they feel like they can't live up to, like you said, the Housewives of Atlanta. Let me tell you, these women have whole glam squads behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So you can look good too, ladies. Just get you a makeup artist. Not yeah, me. We but want you to <laughs> be empowered from the inside out because, mm -hmm. you know, you could put on all that makeup and stuff and still be ugly and feel still be and feel ugly because the inside is dirty. So, you know, women like you that have shed your light to empower and inspire people is where that beauty comes from. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're depressed because you're not walking in purpose. You're not doing what you are God ordained to do. Nobody can do what you've been assigned to do. There can be people that are trying to duplicate you. And remember, people that are around you, they know more about you than you know yourself. They know the power that you have inside to excel to that next level. And you need to tap into that to know that you're more than what you see in the mirror every day. Don't just stop there looking in the mirror and say, oh, look at this blemish on my face. Oh, I can't get my eyelashes right. You're so much more than that. And the world needs to see that glory. The world needs to see that glow. And don't get mad when people don't buy into those dreams that you have. You have to remember that it is your dream. It is your purpose. It is your destiny. So don't get mad if people won't go with you because they're not supposed to. As a matter of fact, those that are holding your hands right now won't be with you when you walk into that purpose that you're supposed to be in. And it won't be because they're mad at you or you're upset. It's just the fact that you've gone in a different direction and that direction is to empower somebody else. And if we can ever get to that point, that mental state where we know that our lives are not just about us, 
but it's what God wants to do through us that's going to make the difference and give us more jewels in our crowns. Well, I tell you, you know, there's not a person watching this, whether live or, or playing the playback of it, that wouldn't be encouraged by what they've heard. Because what we understand here is once again, that there is no straight line to the top, that every day of our life, we are in some type of development. We are becoming, we are always becoming, becoming inside of it. So we have to embrace the chapters or the seasons that we're in, because in fact, those chapters and seasons, they say a lot about where we are right now, but they are tomorrow's story. They're tomorrow's stories about our lives. So we, when we embrace our today, you know, whether we have setbacks or whatever and failure, you said earlier about failing your way to, to success or failing your way to the top. There is no there is no success unless we have had some failures. Every person who have ever won knows what it is to lose. Yes. And we got to be able to be all right in embracing. I always ask the most uh, 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 what the most important question to ask yourself in life is that when I fail. Did I stop? Did I stop trying because I failed, or did I fail because I stopped trying? And we have to answer that question because the fact failure should not be some type of title deed to us that means that we're unsuccessful. It should be that fuel that causes us to push further, that causes us to go back to the drawing board, that causes us to reach deeper than ourselves. Your criticism is nothing but is, is nothing but a lifter to me because now I know that I can rise above and I won't be happy until I rise above what you say. And that is the power that oftentimes women have. Women have that ability to be resilient, to bounce back. And though all women may not possess that in and of themselves, they need the encouragement. They need the motivation. They need the, the sister girl to come alongside them. They need that type of support system that actually speaks into their lives to say to your girl, get up from there. Come, on. You can do better than that. This is not your permanent destination. Failure does not have to be fatal and it definitely does not have to be final. It has to be that elevator of that platform that lifts us up to that next place. And Kenny, that's what I see inside of no matter what has happened in your life, not that there's this long line of failure, but what I do see is that the ability to discern opportunity, mm -hmm. the ability to discern opportunity, everything is not necessarily an obstacle as much as it is an opportunity. And if we're willing to take the opportunity to learn from what we go through, because as we said, you said it earlier, Dr. Val, when we grow through what we go through, that is that is that is a reward on the other end of it. When we grow through what we go through, it equals to success. It equals the next chapter. It equals that next page. And you're writing every day of our lives. We're writing. We're writing in that book of life. Yes, the book of life that we are actually the author of. Now we understand that God. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, but we're really the author and finisher of the seasons in our lives. And when we make up in our mind that enough is enough. It is time to turn the page. We can turn the page. And speaking of that, real quick, because I know we're going to be ending soon. Um, I'm working on my first movie. Um, I, I am a writer. Like wow. I said, I have two books in me, but I said I'm going to put those on the back burner right now. I got to finish this movie. And I'm just so happy that I'm able yes. to do that. I just want to tell anyone who's watching, and I never thought I would say this, and this is about the growth process, is never stop learning. Never wow. stop learning. You know, going into the film and TV television genre, because I have a associate in science in film and TV, and now I have my bachelor's in mass communications and journalism. So after I did this, I said I wanted to start a movie. Right now, I'm taking two master classes, one from um, Issa Rae and also one from Shonda Rhimes. If you know those ladies, Google those ladies. But I felt that I would have to learn from the best when you want to be the best. And I am never... Um, at that point where I can, I know it all. We always can learn from someone. And, you know, for people who say, well, I don't have, you know, those type of people around me. I don't have a TV film producer that I can just pick up the phone and call. So the best thing about this thing called internet is that now they have master classes that you can, you know, small investment and you have to invest in yourself. Yes. You know, a lot of us got that yes. stimulus check. Use some of that money, yes. right? Use some of that money wisely. 
use some of that money to invest in yourself because that's the gift that keeps on giving. So even if you take 10 or 20 percent of that and say, you know what, I'm going to sign up for a master class. Maybe I want to start sewing. Maybe I could take a sewing class. But those like things like that, invest in yourself, even if you think you're great. Learning more will make you greater. And greater. we always want to put that extra, right? That extra yes. emphasis on it. So please, whatever you do, don't feel, I don't care if you have your master's or whatever, you can never stop learning. And we talked about the Les Browns. I mean, those people there, the Oprah Winfrey's, the Tyler Perry's, if you Google some of their speeches, when I tell you, when you're feeling down and out, those people will make you like, okay, let me tell it's time to get it. It's time to get it, right? We want to have that it's time to get it mentality, especially in yes. 2021, because nobody's going to give it to you. You got to go get it. Got to go get it. And wow. that's why I'm loving you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for being this here. Fun. Being a part of the show. Absolutely. Yes. And I can't wait for you to come back because I'm sure you can pour into so many thousands of lives here from this platform. And I'm so grateful that after two years of resting, after doing nine years of radio, I came back just to meet you, Miss Kitty London. Thank you so much for being here. Well, I promise I will not be like Tyler Perry, okay? So if I, <laughs> when I do become the next Oprah Kitty London or whatever, I promise. And I have to make those promises and I have to make good on those promises because I'm telling you, the way God does it, I tell people all the time, do not look at someone's humble beginnings and, and, and turn the turn them away and think that you right. know where they're going to be. Because the world is like, like I say, it goes around. Today, you can be a, a person that no one's ever heard of. Next year, you will be a household name. So yes. please treat everyone equally because you never yes. know. I tell you the year of the underdog, God is up to something. And he tests us and see where we are going, how we're coming, you know, how we're coming. And I'm, I'm a loss of words right now, but I'm, I'm getting there. The our, our true intention. Sometimes he hides, you know, the glory. He hides that because he yes. wants to see what your true intentions are. And he will let you come across people who look ordinary, but are truly extraordinary. So please yes. don't sleep on people who don't have a name. I'm telling you, God is up to something. Yes, okay? indeed. I love it. Well said, spoken like a true queen. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have oh. been here with Miss Kitty London. And don't forget to visit her website, thepeopleofpower.com. Thank you so much for joining. See you next week on Hot Topics from the Soul. Oh.